who is the greatest grappler ever? You were very astute in the way you asked that question. You didn't say the greatest jujitsu player of all time. You specified grappler. What's the bigger category? Jujitsu Jiu is the bigger category. Jujitsu has four faces. There is gi competition. There is no gi competition. There is mixed martial arts competition. And there is self-defense. So jujitsu has four aspects. Grappling typically refers only to the no gi aspect of jujitsu. So it's one out of four possibilities. So who's the greatest jujitsu practitioner ever? And then who is the greatest grappler ever? I believe that the greatest jujitsu player, certainly that I ever met, and I believe of all time, I, I, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant on that because really you can only go with your own experiences. And there are some great athletes that other people mention that I, I just never met. So, um, but in, in my estimation, the greatest jujitsu player is Hodger Gracie. Uh, my reasoning for that is out of the four faces of jujitsu, he excelled in three. And in two of them in particular, he was the best of his generation by a landslide. Um, in gi grappling, no gi grappling, Hodger dominated his generation to a degree that is truly impressive. What do you attribute that dominance to, by the way? Is there something, if you were to analyze him? Fascinating question, I'll come back to it. Uh, in mixed martial arts, he was at his peak, uh, I believe ranked in the top 10 in the, uh, in the world of mixed martial arts. Uh, he wasn't the best in mixed martial arts the way he was in grappling, but he was damn good. And um, he beat some significant people. So he showed tremendous versatility. Gi, no gi, mixed martial arts. Uh, he's not really known in the world of self-defense, but there's no real criteria by which you would become dominant in self-defense. So that's kind of a, you can't really judge people by that. I'm, believe me, I'm, if Hodger got into a fight in the street, I'm sure he, he would do just fine. Yeah. So I, I have no concerns about that. Um, uh, so I would say that, if you look at jiu-jitsu for what I believe it is, a, a sport with four faces, I believe it's uh, you, you have to go with Hodger Gracie as uh, the one who went out and empirically proved his ability to, to go a across those, those elements and do extraordinarily well in all of them. He even made the, um, the extraordinary step of coming out of retirement and beating the best of the generation that came after him. And that's, that's a, yes, that's a truly difficult yeah, feat. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, and a sport which progresses very, very rapidly, that's a truly impressive accomplishment. So I'd like to talk to you about Gordon, Hodger, and uh, George, GSB. Mm. Let's first talk about what do you think, because there's very different, from my perspective, maybe you can correct me, but very different artists. Yes. Masters of their uh, pursuits. So what makes Hodger so good? Hodger was probably the living embodiment of someone who played a classical jiu-jitsu game based around the, the, the fundamental four steps of jiu-jitsu. And, and um, uh, like if, if you took someone who had taken introduction lessons in jiu-jitsu for three months, they would recognize the outlines of Hodge's game with many of the techniques they learned in those first three months. Hodge was the best example of the dichotomy between the fundamentals of jiu-jitsu, but also a kind of hidden sophistication underneath those fundamentals. People always say, oh, you know, Hodge's game was so basic. No, the outlines of Hodge's game were basic, but the degree of sophistication and the application was extraordinary. And uh, his ability to refine existing technology was truly impressive. Um, I never saw anyone in his generation that even came close to his, uh, his ability, both in competition and uh, uh, in the gym. So for people who don't know, Hodger Gracie basically used, just like you said, a very simple techniques on the surface from the outsider's perspective, 
that uh, most people learn when they uh, start jiu-jitsu, like uh, passing guard in a very simple way, taking mount and uh, choking from mount. Uh, also, it, when he's on his back, it's closed guard and all the basic submissions from closed guard, arm bar and triangle. And just that's it. <laughs> and being able to dominate, shut down and submit. So control and submit the best people in the world for many, many years, just like you said, including coming out of retirement and beating the best, perhaps by far the best of the next generation. So that's that just kind of lays out the story. Is there some lessons about his systems that you uh, learn in developing mm. your own system? Excellent question. The, the thing which always impressed me the most about uh, Hodger was his relentless pursuit of, uh, of position to submission. Everything was done with the belief that no victory was worthwhile if it didn't involve submitting his opponent. Mm, yeah. That's a mindset that I try very, very hard to imbue in my students. The easiest path to victory in jiu-jitsu is the one which takes the least risk. So for example, you will see many modern athletes focus on scoring the first point or the first advantage and then doing the minimum amount of work to eke out a victory once they've done that. They get a small tactical advantage, they realize they're ahead, take no more risks, and just do the minimum amount of work to get the victory. Hodges' mindset was always to take the riskier gambit of submission, which entails a lot more work and in many cases, a lot more skill. What I always liked about Hodger is he never tried to play tactics. It was always just go out there and try to win by submission. And that more than anything, that mindset of looking for the most perfect victory rather than the victory that takes the least skill and the least effort is probably the, the thing I took from his career the most and tried to work upon in my students. I always wonder what are the little details he's doing under there when he's in mount, the little adjustments, you know? but perhaps that's like almost indescribable, the, the details of that control. 